Having a strong core in boxing is very important for a number of reasons, not just to be able to take punches, but also to be able to get the power in the punches, get the speed in the punches, and also to reduce the risk of injury. On this video, we're gonna go over the eight best core exercises that you can do for boxing. And I brought along my good friend, BJ Gador, who is an expert in this field. And he's also the former men's health fitness director, and he's gonna be giving us these great exercises. And also at the end, we've got a little bonus tip from BJ that he's gonna give us that is gonna be so beneficial to you. BJ, before we show us these eight amazing exercises, let's talk a little bit more about why the core is so important for boxers. The way people treat their core in terms of training, they think movement, a lot of the best core exercises actually teach your body how to fight or resist movement to prevent the spine from moving in ways you don't want it to move. So we'll go through a series of drills that'll improve stability for the spine, but also light up your abs, your obliques, your lower back muscles. You'll get as much as performance improvements as aesthetic improvements too for those that want to get lean and look good at the beach. Yeah, who doesn't want to look good at the beach? And this guy's got a 10 pack that we're going to see in a minute. So the first one is called the hollow body hold. And What's this one all about? So this is actually a foundational movement in gymnastics. They teach kids this on day one because it teaches you how to create total body tension and lock in a perfect spinal position. So to start, what you want to really focus on doing is you don't want any space between your lower back and the floor. So first right there, kind of push your navel into the ground, flatten out and start with a tuck. You're lifting your shoulders off the ground, you're squeezing your feet together, and you want to get comfortable being able to breathe in this compressed position. This is actually going to help build your breathing muscles and really light up your abs. So you're squeezing your core right now. I'm, I'm exactly. I'm squeezing to keep my shoulders off, and I'm trying to breathe. Now I can progress this by slowly extending the arms and legs away. And now, and if I don't keep a good abdominal contraction, my low back will arc, and I might feel some pain. So you got to really fight for that position. A nice in between is a pump. So you hold this, inhale out, exhale in, and man, it's, it's cooking right now, Tony. I'm feeling that six pack burn. <laughs> and how long would we do this for? This one's great for, if you're doing pumps, let's say 10 to 20 pumps. If you're doing the hold, ideally start with 30 to 60 seconds. If you can build up to one to two minutes, you've got elite level of abdominal strength. And again, all while being able to breathe in this position, which is the key. So number two is crawls. And I've actually done these before with, I think, you know, Glenn Holmes, who put me through an ab workout and it was great. And these are fantastic. Do you want to talk about them? They're so good because it really helps build your breathing muscles. Your, all these muscles around your trunk are actually secondary breathing muscles, but when they're working to stabilize your spine, it actually isolates your diaphragm. It's the only one that can really help you breathe. Yeah. So it's really hard to breathe properly in a bear crawl position. You can start, by the way, on the knees, regress it, and you're going opposite arm leg, and try to alternate between an inhale and an exhale each step, and then I make it more challenging by lifting the knees off the ground. And I want you to think about balancing a glass of water on your trunk. Sometimes people put a cone on their upper back so that if the cone falls, it means that I'm wobbling too much. You want to yeah. be nice and steady. The slower, the better with these crawls. And again, you can start to add arm reaches, leg reaches, opposite arm leg reaches. I can rotate into a crab walk position, which gets more of the posterior shoulder and glutes, where the other version, the main crawl, is more anterior core, shoulders, all the muscles along the ribs, the quads. And this one, there's no limit. I can do it piped to get more. Is that working your abs when you open that? Oh yeah, so you're just, Think about the bear crawl as a moving plank, right? Because right. uh, I can okay. move into a plank. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I can come right back to it. Yeah. I can do a plank to push up transfer here. So one of my favorite things to do if you really want to crush yourself as a finisher, it's safe. And you rest pause when you need to, meaning you can take a brief five or 10 second break. Try to do five minutes of bear crawls to finish a workout. Right. Or if you want to make your upper body get even more smoked during a boxing workout, try to crawl during the one minute rest between rounds. Ooh. And then every punch you throw, especially in the heavy bag, it's, it's, it's like bodybuilding meets boxing. Right, yeah. With the time under tension. Yeah, that's gonna really help build your conditioning. Big time. Number three is a dumbbell sit up. It's a kind of different to the dumbbell sit ups that I've done in the past. This one's so good for the shoulders and it's so good for hip and trunk flexion on this movement. So, what we like to do is I'll show starting with one dumbbell and again, kind of start in a fetal position so you can get in it. You roll here, get a good straddle stretch going, inhale through the nose into the belly to give a lot of air pressure supports your spine and then exhale up into a sit. And I like to reach the opposite hand to the same side leg there to stretch. On the way down is critical. You gotta kind of 
contract and curl up the spine a bit. Kind of that hollow body Slowly position down. we work to. Yeah. Exactly. So you don't, you don't want is like coming down and going, yeah. right? So it's about really controlling the eccentric. So exhale up to power the movement. And then make it as slow as possible. Inhale down for stability. Now, you can also make it kind of an upper body workout too. Add two floor presses. Yeah. Add an overhead press, which again, you're challenging your one side load. It's you're challenging your obliques to stabilize. Your shoulders are getting smoked. It's so hard to hold your arms overhead. So it'll make you more comfortable with your arms here when you box. So much harder here, right? And uh, what I can also do with this too is come up and I can actually transfer into Tony's like, oh my God, <laughs> he's going matrix style. I can transfer into a full get up. Yeah. So I make that, it's a full body abs exercise and I can come back to the sit up yeah. and then finish off. And if you really want to challenge yourself, you can do this with two dumbbells. But I like going one side at a time because it's a little bit easier on the spine and it helps you kind of work on imbalances between each arm. No, I like it. And I'm guessing, let me try it with the dumbbell. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, mix it easy to sit up if you've got the dumbbell in your hand. This is a heavy Big dumbbell. focus is don't, don't, uh, spread your legs wide too, kind of like a straddle stretch and try to dig the heels in. Don't even think about sitting up. Think about pushing the dumbbell overhead. Just push it straight up while keeping the arms straight. There you go. And go right here, palm facing. Let me heal my left one. There you go. There you go, Tony, exhale it up. <laughs> that one's tough. So again, I'd recommend starting even I going light with, yeah. just body weight or a five or 10 pound bell uh, is a great place to start. And again, the key is I would even keep it lower rep, like even five reps, three to five reps per yeah. side and just focus on really Again, that super slow eccentric where, again, you want to get wide, dig your heels underneath the ground, flat on that back, <sighs> exhale it up, and then try to take five seconds on the way down. In this yeah. one, again, if you have trouble getting the arm overhead, that's when you want to look at that mobility video we did. Those hangs will help a lot. Yeah. All right, number three is a way to get that kind of ab wheel effect without equipment. It's called the push-up walkout. It's also kind of best of mobility and core strength because you need mobility to do it properly. Right. So what you do is, and again, you can bend the knees as much as you need to, but I basically kind of tried to hinge down and get flat here, and I'm gonna walk out. And initially, you might just go to push-up or you might just go to forehead, but ideally, you're gonna try to walk out as far as you can with arms overhead, and then bring it right back. You can also do this from a bear crawl position if you have a little bit of hamstring mobility issues and you can walk out from the bear crawl, but it's working that anti-extension component. So you gotta really maintain good abdominal contraction. What you don't want is this, right? That lower yeah. back extension, that's what's gonna cause a lot of pain. So you only go out as far as you can without feeling anything in the back. Over time, you'll be able to get further and further out until you get that full extended position, kind of looking like uh, almost Spider-Man, kind of hovering the ground, but it really works your lats too, which are very important muscles to work in boxing. Yeah, no, that looks great. And I'm gonna try it right now, see Let's how do I it, know. Man. So you gotta come down. Yep. I noticed you had your hands flat. I'm not as flexible, yeah, I know. so I just go a bit wider. You can right? go wider, or you can also bend the knees a bit. Oh, right, okay. Or you can start from a bear crawl. So I'm here. And let's just start by walking, just get a little bit overhead, not too much. Good, now walk it back. And you can feel your shoulders working really hard to stabilize as you do yeah. this. You're just going into a plank, but it's an extended plank. So you're actually lengthening the lever, which makes your abs work harder to stabilize your spine. Do I want to be squeezing my abs at the same time? Ideally, or? think about as if I was about to kick or punch you in the yeah. stomach. Maintain that, like almost like the hollow body hold position, which is why we started with it. It's teaching you that compression that you get in your abs, kind of all, almost always kind of having them. It's almost like you're, you're shirtless at the beach. You just want to keep a little bit of tension. <laughs> yeah. Just, you know, keep them tight. Uh, not only get ready for a punch at all times. Yeah. Remember you hit me with a body shot once when we sparred. <laughs> I wasn't ready for it. And uh, <laughs> it felt strange in there when you hit an organ. So yeah. <laughs> keeping some constant tension, and that also makes it so that you don't get into that lumbar extended position, which right, hurts your yeah. lower back. Yeah, and like you mentioned, that is very important in boxing, that you can stay relaxed, but keeping this tight at the same time. And still breathe. Because a lot of people will hold the breath when they're trying to squeeze their abs, and they're like, mm. so much for a punch, no. Yeah, I'm relaxed now, but the abs are tight. And I guess this is going to help with that. And that's why you see some of the, like, some of those training montages too. They'll actually be holding crunches or that hollow body shape and then someone will be punching them in the stomach. So again, yeah. that's, we, we're not doing that now because we care about each other. We're not trying <laughs> to hurt each other today, but uh, that's the concept, right? Is keeping tension, but still being able to breathe through it. So number five is the side plank progression. Now you see a lot of people doing like broomstick 
twists yeah. or side crunches. I'm not here to you know, crap on those movements, but the main focus you wanna have with your obliques is to stabilize the spine and actually fight lateral flexion. And this will build the obliques, it'll build the la whole lateral musculature of your body and really help with back pain. So what we do here is um, the side plank, best place to start is bend your knees at 90 degrees, short lever side plank, my elbow and shoulders aligned, my fists and elbow are aligned. Think about ice picking into the ground and then just think about standing on your side. So I have the same standing posture. I'm not rounded forward. I'm locked in. And again, inhale through the nose into the belly. Exhale through the mouth. You can hold this for 30 to 60 seconds per side or three to five breaths. I make it harder by extending the legs. If I want to get more hip A, A, B, D abduction work, I raise the top leg. If I want to get more adductor or groin work, I raise the inside leg. I can also roll and I can hold that and mix in these different versions. So I go from side plank to front plank and now you're getting three dimensional core work. Your right. spine is stabilizing in all planes of motion. Watching these exercises and I'm learning a lot here as well, but I'm comparing these to when I was a kid and when we were coming up, the crunches, just a ton of, ton of crunches, but I think it's been proven that they're not the, the best for you know, back. some people say they're the worst thing ever. I, I, I'm not an absolutist. So I think every move probably has a purpose in, in one particular scenario. But if we look at carryover, all, all a crunch is, is it's just flexing your thoracic spine. So it's, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's not as powerful yeah. as some of these plank positions that really, it's their full body. They work more of your muscles and they carry over more to boxing, sport in general. Right, yeah. Yeah, when I first started boxing many years ago, I, <laughs> I never ever did a plank, not until we got to the Great Britain boxing team, then we start planking a lot more and you know, working with, I think, more educated strength people. And I think now planks is one of the best core exercises that you can do, correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, you know, they are. Again, like if you want to go to push-ups, you have to learn how to plank first. The plank is the foundation for, yes. for all push-ups. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just like learning how to hang is the foundation for all pull-ups. Okay. So if you can't hold positions, adding motion to the positions, that's when you can get in real trouble. Because right. usually if people can't plank, this is how they do push-ups. Yeah. You know, or they're doing, Yeah. you know, so it's to do a perfect, you know, and especially if you can do them slow and just have full control through the motion. And again, most people do a lot of kind of front to back of linear movements. The beauty of this, it hits what's called the frontal plane, side to side. So this is where people are at a big risk for injury because they don't train their lateral musculature because you don't see it in the mirror. You yeah. don't see the sides of your body. You're looking for the abs, the chest, the biceps. Yeah. So it really rounds out your training. So number six, we're actually gonna get into your lower abs, a little bit of hip flexor and your obliques. It's called the reverse crunch to rainbow. And I like to actually do this with a light medicine ball. Start with like a four to six pounder. Don't go heavier than a 10 in the beginning. Uh, anytime I can squeeze the ball between my legs to get the pelvic floor activated, that gets more overall, you get more hip and better spinal position as well. So here's what we do here. We get locked in. And again, just like all the drills where we're on the back, you wanna focus on getting the lower back flat on the floor. You wanna squeeze the ball between the legs. I'm gonna inhale through the nose as I lower my heels to the ground again without See that extension? I don't want that. I want to keep my lower back pressing to the ground. <sighs> Exhale up. And then I can transition my arms out to the side. And then I'm coming across the hip. <sighs> Exhale across. Now this is using all of your abs, right? Big time. And Everything. again, this is actually mobilizing. You're getting a little bit of lumbar rotation, which is okay, but we're also getting that hip rotation all the time. I'm squeezing the ball hard, working my groin and my whole pelvic floor. As, at the same time, staying relaxed, right? trying to stay relaxed and trying to really focus on pinning both shoulders on the ground. You can see how I'm kind of almost like uh, in, in that kind of cross position, right? Yeah. And so it's, it's kind of a mobility movement too for the hips. And again, this is gonna smoke the low abs. Yeah. Now, if you wanna make it a little bit harder too when you, you come up from here, I kind of try to think about pouring a cup. If, my, if a cup is resting on my stomach, I'm gonna pour that cup to my chest and lift off a little bit. And then I go, the ball is great too because it kind of minimizes the range of motion so you don't twist too far. Can you do it without the ball? You can, yeah. So this is what it looks like without the ball. It's actually a little bit easier because there's not, that's a 10 pound ball. But you also kind of might, some people might, it might be too far of a twist for their back. I mean, you can get here, but you might just have to not go down as far. Right. But the ball spacing just kind of puts you in a really nice range of motion where you don't over rotate, but you really are working the obliques and again, the low abs. So it's yeah. kind of like, they call it the reverse crunch because 
We're driving the movement with a hip movement versus your trunk. Number seven, med ball chops and twists. And this is something that I've got experience with. I've done this before and I absolutely love these. You know, you do a lot of work on the core and the ground, which is good, especially in start to start to learn the good mechanics. But the best core training is on your feet. Transfers over to sport more, especially right. boxing. And boxing is heavy into twisting, level change. So I love chops and twists. And again, don't go too heavy. People go like 20, 30 pound med ball on this, then the movement is like super slow. Five to 10 pounds is ideal because you can still get some speed on it. And then as well with the extra weight, I'm sure this puts too much stress on your lower back. Yes, when you can really, 100%, right? Yeah. right? If you don't know how to stabilize the spine and you start going fast and quick with turns, that's when you can really hurt your yeah. lower back. So the way I'll teach this is take it, like if we're doing five to 10 reps, think of them as five to 10 single reps. So what we do is you inhale and I'm going to explode. And then yeah. I want you to slowly inhale to reset. Notice how I got bends in my ankles, knees, and hips. My shoulders are higher than my hips. I don't want to be like this. That's, a, that's the bad yeah. position we got to be careful yeah. of. So drop the hips, explode, and... Well, as well, what you're doing with your feet here, if you see the feet, it's the same rotation as that you're throwing a left hook. 100%. Or, or, a, right, or a right hand. Pivoting feet, rotating hips. Yeah. So that's, that's the chop. The twist is similar, and what I love about the twist is I, uh, I can actually get lower to to work my legs. But what I do is, you notice, where's my belly button? It's always forward versus that's a twist. Like, that's not a good position, yeah. right? So I'm pivoting the feet, rotating the hips. Yeah. And I, but I hold it, right? I don't over-rotate. So, and then if I get, drop my hips more, oh my God, my legs yeah. are on fire. And that's that kind of Mike Tyson level of where he would get super low. It's like, how, does, how is he in a deep lunge and twisting? Well, a movement like this can help you train for that. And again, if you get comfortable getting low, you'll get a lot more power in your punches yeah. and you can always, you know, they say in football, American football, low man wins. I think that also can apply in boxing too because, you know, if you don't have the legs yeah, to the last, legs. right, yeah. you're going to get knocked out. I, I mean, I would recommend going for time over repetition. And then, I mean, you tell me if, I, if I'm wrong here, but with time, you can, you can see your pro progression. So you could start by doing like each one for 15 seconds, 20 seconds, sure. and then your next session, and then you can try and increase it at maybe 25 or the, your next week. And that's one way of seeing your progression. What do you think about that? I think that's great. I, th I think number one, you start light and then also yeah. treat it as, as a cycle, right? So we're, we're slowly loading and then we're exploding, but then eventually, you can explode on both portions, yeah. right? So, but initially learn how to load, learn how to get that springing, absorb the energy, then explode, and then you can make them more continuous. You can start working them for like 30 to 60 seconds. Yeah, yeah. Top end, uh, or if you want to go heavier, faster, like 15 to 30 seconds or 10 to 20, right, right, for really right. advanced athletes. Yeah. But in the beginning, really load up. Because again, yeah. people want to go so fast on the way down, most people don't know how to absorb, right? And, and the, the key to exploding is, is learn how to load yeah. properly and also, not get hurt. Yeah, and I think that's a big thing here. Keeping the right form and the technique, as you've seen, while well, BG, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of everything in this, or you could just get hurt if you've got a weight in your hand. Yeah. You gotta be careful with any, any twisting. You know, again, it's like there's no, there's not really bad exercises that just exercises performed with too heavy of a load or not with proper form. Now, number eight, before we get to the bonus tip, we're gonna do some hanging leg raises. Now, I've done these before, very difficult and I would say pretty advanced. Very advanced. That's what I'd say for last because you don't want to do this until you've done the previous movements properly because the hardest thing for your body to stabilize is overhead. Overhead is very hard for the spine to maintain a good contraction without getting extended. And then we're combining that with some hip flexion and low ab work with the actual leg raise. So it's kind of two in one. It's a full body core exercise. Every aspect of your spine is involved in stabilizing and, and creating movement through the hips. So what we do here is, and again, grip wise, I'd start with the hammer grip. This tends to be the most joint friendly. People have, you know, elbow, shoulder pain or mobility issues. Start there. It's most challenging overhand. So just kind of keep a, a mind on that. And I love, even if it's like a two pound med ball or a foam roller, you can squeeze between your legs. That's just going to help you get more pelvic floor activation and better spinal position. This is not for having extra weight on to make it harder. Well, it's both, it it's both. Yeah, so you, you can, uh, I'll do this with, you know, 20 to 30 pound med ball for some lower reps and I'll do it with, you know, a 10 pound med ball for some higher reps. Uh, so I get both functions, pelvic yeah. floor activation, the, ad the adduction squeeze, better alignment, but also I get some load coming through my core yeah. too. When I used to do these, I was doing a little bit different, I think, uh, and I never, never used to have a ball there, I would just do it. I, I would just recommend, so anytime you squeeze, 
those legs together, you're going to create more strength and stability through yeah. the whole middle of the body. But yeah, you can definitely do them without the ball. Yeah. Um, okay. You know, these balls go down like two or four pounds. So All right. yeah. it, it just gives you a little bit, but again, even squeezing a roller between your legs. Yeah. You, uh, not much weight, but yeah. it gives you more form and technique. Okay. And, uh, you know, this is great for, I, I would focus on sets of five to 10 reps, picking a load that kind of challenges you in that range. You want to pack your shoulders down and back. And the beauty of the ball too, is that the weight of the ball actually tractions your hips. Okay. You know, it, pull, it pulls and creates more decompression in the spine too. Right. So I exhale up, trying to work to get the knees above hip level, which is what activates the psoas. They only work above 90 degrees of hip flexion. What's psoas? Psoas are these muscles right here. Okay. Very weak in a lot of people. And if they're weak and tight, you get back pain. So uh, doing a lot of the mobility work we did will help stretch those areas. A weak muscle is never a good muscle to have either. You want to strengthen your, your hip flexors too. So you're getting hip flexor strength. You're getting your whole pelvic floor working here and lats, grip, and the whole trunk is actively involved here working. One little uh, twist, if you will, to get the obliques involved more is I can do a three-way which I know you're a big fan of. <laughs> you invited me to one. I was like, I'm not ready, Tony. I don't have the skills. <sighs> Little twist. <sighs> and again, you know, don't do these too fast. Really, you want to be able to hold. Control it. Control. <sighs> but another thing, I want to just see this right now, right? This guy is absolute beast, right? If you just check out his YouTube channel, you'll be able to see that straight away. If you can't do that, don't worry about it because you're making all these look very easy. And I just want a little disclaimer that a lot of them is difficult. And all, you, and you do this for a living. It's like what you do all the time. I, this is what I do for a living. It's like, how many rounds have you put in the ring? Yeah. I put those same reps into filming content and making workouts and... But part of what I did too is we started on the ground and we worked our way up. Yeah, to, we built up to this, right? Yeah. Like if you can't do the reverse crunch we showed on the ground, which is a similar action because it's so much harder to hang your whole body yeah. weight, you start there and build up to this or work on hangs and the reverse crunch separately. And then you can combine those two movements together down the road. So we wanted to make sure everyone, you know, from beginner to your advanced followers, subscribers, yeah can get into this and get some good work. Now, before we give you the bonus tip that you're gonna use with the heavy bag, I just wanna tell you about the sponsor of today's video. Shroom Tech is an amazing supplement that you can have for free. Yes, all my subscribers are gonna get a free trial of Shroom Tech. This has got the very best ingredients that you can imagine, and it really helps me with my overall training performance. The idea with Shroom Tech is that it supplies more oxygen to your muscles, which helps with stamina, more endurance, and better recovery. It's very rare that you will find a supplement that is not a stimulant like this so you're not going to have a high than a crash this just keeps you there all the time i love it i highly recommend it and you're going to get it for free click the link below get it for a free trial right now no strings attached not so good on it.com forward slash boxing and you will get 10 percent off their entire website check it out and you can thank me later let's get back on with this video okay bg what we got here so this is actually the first exercise we're showing now that actually uses the bag and we're, we're punching and we're doing it from a seated position to isolate the abs because when we sit like this in particular and you can sit like this or you can kind of get your feet like this you can kind of mix up but we're getting some stretches through the hips but we can only move through our trunk particularly our upper back so if i'm trying to throw a hook here i can't use my hips at all where can i draw the motion i can twist through my upper back or thoracic spine and I've got no legs behind my punches, right. so this is really, it's going to make your upper body, shoulders, and abs work a lot harder. Now, if you start throwing some violent punches on your butt, imagine what can happen when you stand back up on your feet. So I love this as kind of a starter, maybe round one, sit down for the full three minutes. And you can even bias, you know, one side, kind of more, go kind of twist more southpaw. I mean, sorry, orthodox, or then twist more southpaw. Yeah. Like kind of changing your, your leg position. or your, Focus on your core. Exactly, a little hip twist. Because with uh, this, the only way you can get the power and the rotation is by using your core, right? 100%, you can add sit-ups into it. And you can even try to, like, you know, if someone kind of a beta punch coming back, or I can work on twisting in and out. So it's just, you know, kind of one of those things. Have fun, flow, it's great to put into a warm up or a cool down. And if you have trouble getting your abs behind your punches or you just want to isolate your upper body on your punches, sitting down is a great way to do it. Now, having a strong core is one thing, but if you want to be able to perform better in your overall boxing training, click here next and watch this full video that I did with BJ talking about your mobility. Click here and watch this video next.